Hey there, and welcome back to Tabletop Witchcraft. This week is a very special Halloween episode here on the channel where I'm going to show you how to build this epic haunted house. This would be a great build for a campaign like The Curse of Strahd, which I've been wanting to run for a while, so I'm going to have to make that happen real soon. This video is packed with all kinds of cool tips and tricks, along with a very cool interview at the end of the video with my collaborator, who is an amazing artist and crafter in the world of foam, Gerard Boom. He's got an awesome announcement to make, an epic announcement to make for the crafting community, along with a second special guest who I'll have here in person. Now, I'd also like to thank Noble Knight Games also for helping to support the channel and providing the miniatures that you're going to see in this build and in the video. There'll be a link in the description below to their site and a discount that they're offering to all the viewers. Now don't worry, at the end of the video, like all my epic builds, I will have that epic montage for you to check out. And I challenge you to turn your lights off and turn that volume up at night and watch it and try not to get chills. All right, sit back, grab some popcorn, or in this case, candy corn, and let's get crafting. All right, we're gonna start out with the first floor of this building. Now, you can get these plans found in the description below, but if you don't wanna print them off, not a big deal. Just pause the video as we go along to get an idea of what these cuts need to be. Starting off with a stack of half inch XPS foam, I use a whole bunch of these as scrap. You could obviously use some two inch or one inch uh, to cut down on the amount you have to glue, but we're gonna use shiftinglands.com multi-corner cutter to cut that octagon shape out. Now typically I like my walls of the buildings to be three inches high, so that's what I'm going with right here. And when I can use a framing square to make the cuts, I'll do that. And as you can see, I'm using the mat down below to make sure I'm square uh, when I'm putting this together. And I'm just gluing it with some hot glue and some toothpicks to secure it in place. Now I cut out the second floor plan from the plans. And I'm going to use the Proxon on a low heat to freehand all these cuts. You want to get them as close as you can, so keep the heat as low as you can and still have it manageable so you're not bending the wire too much. So this is a really cool tip uh, and trick here. To make an angled cut for the roof around the entire perimeter of the house, I needed to angle it like this. And to do so, I used a couple pieces of chipboard and I just ran this hot wire knife along both edges and it made a really cool angled cut. Later on in the video, I'll use a framing square for the bottom piece of chipboard. I found that it slides and glides the wire over it a little bit easier. The corners of these pieces right here, I would recommend using an Ulfa knife to cut and pop those out. It's a lot easier than using the hot wire knife and a lot safer too. So once you have the walls cut out, we're gonna use some tacky glue to glue the walls to the second floor of the building. Now this happens to be the exact measurement I need for the next section of the smaller tower with, that's going to have like a cone shape on it towards the end. And I want to have this a different height than the rest of the second floor. So what I did was cut this piece out a little bit larger than the other octagon shapes. And you're going to see what we're going to do here in just a minute where we're going to glue this in place and it's going to offset the height of this roof line compared to the roof line that's going to be just above it. All you got to do next is hold up a wall section along that tower piece, mark it out with some pen, cut it out, and then you can now slide the wall section right into place, again securing it with some toothpicks and hot glue. And as you can see, you can also use the plans there to help make sure everything's lined up nice and square. All right, now this section needs to be cut out with an X-Acto knife. It's gonna be kind of a odd shape and odd cut, but what we need to do is cut the octagon shape off of this. And once we have that marked out and cut off, we're gonna take this over to the Proxon on a very low heat again, and we can cut this out freehand. Once this section is cut out, 
we're going to go over to the exacto knife to make our next cut at this angle we want to go from high to low right here it's a little bit of a tricky cut but just take your time with the exacto and you'll get it this is what the plans look like for the uh, pretty much like the roof section of the build we're going to work on the tower section now of the haunted house and we're going to layer a few sections up here this is going to be a little copper section of the tower cutting this section out it's going to allow us to get the proper angle by shifting the wire back on the proxon and as you can see i just stacked up a bunch of half inch again xps if you got two inch laying around you can use that but the top of this cone is about one inch the bottom i believe is close to three put this on a circle cutter and that's what we're left with so a little bit of hot glue i used a pin to kind of line me up you could leave that in place when you're done and as you can see it doesn't matter if the cone shape isn't exactly perfect because we're going to use this as a skeleton to put shingles on for the house we're going to put siding so don't be too worried about the exact and final look right now now as you can see i just made it on this cut uh, literally it's like four and like three quarter inches uh, square so once we have those cut out we're going back to our trick to get the angle for the tower here and now i'm just cutting out another angle section to get my angle right for the front or main tower the highest part of this haunted house this is very synonymous with a lot of you know victorian style houses that you might see something on the adams family the lock and key house um you know stuff like that you'll see exactly what we're doing working with here in just a minute Now we're going to need to secure the highest part of the tower to this wall. So we're going to need a little support wall in the back of the third floor. And as you can see, that's going to slide into place real nice. There'll be a description down below to all my Amazon affiliate links if you want to pick up any of the tools or crafting supplies that you see in this video as well. Now this section, I'm going to cut just a little tiny rectangle out because this build is going to have two main chimneys, a large and a small. And the large one is going to run up the entire back of this build. Typically, I like to use tacky glue when I'm gluing, um, you know, like a, a floor to these walls. But in this case, it was a very small section, so I opted to use hot glue. So this piece right here turned out to be not an issue, but a section that we had to take out and remove because the cone section of the tower on the left needs to slide into place. I highly recommend cutting it out of the wall that you see here and not trying to remove the cone section of the tower because if you screw that up or take too much off, it's really hard to fix that. You're not going to see any of the wall structure in the background that I had cut out. So that's why I opted to go that route. If you've been following my channel, you know I love to use magnets. So that's what I'm doing here. Just add a few paint drops around the perimeter of one section of your build. Press it into place on the other section, in this case the walls, and you'll get a perfect mirrored section or, um, or look as to where you have to place the magnets on both sides so that they line up properly. These are just a couple of supports that I placed in place here for the chipboard section of the roof. I was a little concerned that, you know, it might bend once it was done and in place with the shingles on it. So that's all that was. And as you're gonna see later on in the video, we're gonna cover this whole thing in some shingles by shifting lands. And I absolutely love the way those shingles uh, turned out. So you're not gonna see any of this chipboard once we're done. This was a really interesting piece to try and stencil out. It took me probably four or five tries to get it. But as you can see here, you can just cut this out um, on the plans if you download them. If not, pause the video and try and get all those angles as close as you can so that it'll fit nicely just like that. 
All right, so here we go. The, the door to the front of the building. I really like the way that this turned out, but I wasn't really happy with the depth of the door. As you can see, I'm literally drawing the door into the building. I wish I would have made it separate and placed it on top so it would have stood out a little bit more from the siding later on. I'll put a link in the description above to how I make all of these door handles. And once I had these hot glued and in place, I just took an X-Acto knife, cut out these little black squares for the windows, and then uh, with a clay sculpting tool, just carve them right out. So here's what the doors look like, and I just added a little sunburst detail over the top of the doors. So while we're on the topic of doors, we're going to add a door to the very top of the tower for the haunted house. I wanted the roof to be playable, um, so all I'm doing here is hot gluing a couple pieces of half inch XPS, cutting the shape out, and then all I did was draw on the woodwork and the nails and all that right onto this piece. And as you can see, it's nice and vertical to the face of the tower roof. So these should look familiar to you. We cut these out just a little while ago. Now we're going to hot glue all three of these pieces right into place. What you don't want to do is hot glue the roof to this last section because we're going to add magnets and it's going to be removable. So I was on the fence now about this part if I want to add individual wood planks, but I really liked the way this whole section looked, you know, with just some wood grain uh, scratched right into the surface. So that's what I did on both sections. And as you can see, I added a few magnets to the roof. This was just a solid piece of XPS, much like the door to the top of the haunted house. I just cut that out and drew all of the woodwork in place by first cutting it out with an X-Acto and then using a pen to highlight everything. Then with the Proxon, or in this case, you could use an Ulfa knife, cut this little piece out. We'll stick a few toothpicks with some hot glue in the stairs and I'll slide right into place. Noting that I'm doing this on top of some parchment paper, in case we get some hot glue on the table, it won't stick. <laughs> so this part right here, uh, I actually messed up real quick and almost freaked out because the hot glue sets really quick. Um, it was set back a little too far. I had to move it forward about another inch. So you can go ahead and hot glue that right into place. Now the very peak of the tower, I just drew in with an X-Acto, uh, like a trapdoor or hatch. And now we're going to use the X-Acto to add in some cool little details to the door on the roof. Just some aging effects. Then we jump over to the plans. We're going to work on the stairs. I'm going to make these a removable section because these can be used on other buildings that we're going to make or in other applications. So cutting a bunch of different sections out from the plans, you're going to see here, I'm going to keep this as much of a one piece build as possible. I'm not going to make a whole bunch of bricks here. So this is the wall section. There's going to be a look of pillars to the whole front. And as you can see, all I'm using is one solid piece of XPS foam using the Proxon to cut these out. A few little details like this little lip here on these stairs is really going to stand out. It makes it look that much better. Then all I'm going to do is use an X-Acto to cut in all of my line work for the bricks. Use a pen and a roller to add some texture and we're good to go. Pop a few bricks out to add some aging effects as well. Alright, I am super pumped. I just got this package today from Gerard Boom at ShiftingLands.com and there's a ton of goodies in here, stuff that we've talked about incorporating into this build, a couple other things that uh, I'm super excited to get my hands on, and uh, who knows, we'll see what else is in here that we can incorporate into the build. So let's open this up and see what we got. Ooh, we don't wanna, we don't wanna cut what's on top here. Look at this. Styro door. Totally awesome. I've been trying to get my hands on this stuff for a long time. Oh, we got a whole bunch of that in here. Alright, let's 
stack this on the floor. All right. Let's see, we got the angle cutter. We'll have to put that together. That's gonna come in real handy. Oh man, it's gonna be hard to tell what some of this is just by looking at it. Oh, more pieces to the angle cutter. All right, cool. Oh man, awesome. A whole bunch of shingles, pre-cut shingles. Oh, holy cow, this is awesome. Look at this. And if you can see that, that is gonna save some serious time. All right. We've got some smaller little shingles here. We can use those over some of the windows. Uh, let's see. Ooh, these opened up, but these are gonna be totally awesome for the top of the uh, of the roof. I don't know if you can see these. Some really cool little uh, fence railing posts that are gonna go around the entire top of the build. A whole bunch of those. Nice, tons and tons of windows. Uh, again, huge time saver. I had a huge list of, uh, of all these windows that I put together for Gerard. And uh, you know, I gave him like one of these, four of these, whatever. And uh, he said uh, he doesn't like to do it that way. It takes uh, too much time for him. So he was gonna just send me full pack. So I appreciate it. Thanks, Gerard. Let's see, more windows, tons of windows. All right. Oh, nice. It's that little, uh, let's see. I've seen this before for adding some details here. I'm not sure of this little, this little guy. We'll have to dig into that a little bit. It's more of the roof railing. We got some smaller windows. Ooh, some signs, that's cool, that's awesome. Signposts. Let's see. We got a couple more sign, uh, windows, window frames, all kinds of windows here, this is awesome. Oh yeah, the big Rosetta window. This is gonna go right in the center, right up front uh, on the, I think the fourth floor of the house. And we got, Another chunk of styrodor. That's awesome. And check these out. These are gonna save me some time, Gerard. Thank you. We got some rollers here. Awesome. Oh, what's this? Oh, we got an. Oh, look at that. Hid one in there. We got some mini bricks. The large brick. And we got a stone pattern and kind of like a little field stone stack stone look there. So these are gonna come in real, real handy. Gerard, thank you very much for um, helping support the channel and being a part of this video. I appreciate it. This is very generous of you and uh, I'm really excited to put this to work. So let's keep on moving. All right, so I was really pumped to finally be able to work with this foam. And I definitely noticed it was a lot more dense and heavier than the typical XPS that you can find here in the States. It took the texture from the aluminum foil real nice and held its shape really nice with the foam roller. Now obviously we're working on the foundation of the build. I'm working on the corner section now and I'm gonna to need to cut perfect corners out of two separate sections of XPS foam or Styrodor in this case. So we're gonna hop over to shiftinglens.com angle cutter. This thing is really awesome. We're gonna go ahead and just put it together in a snap. All right, that was easy. So we can now place this right onto the Proxon for a couple of cuts. Now, I had messed with it just a little bit before um, showing it here in the video. Uh, it's a lot of fun to work with. It's amazing how fast you can get exactly perfectly mirrored pieces and angles on a single piece of foam or on you know multiple pieces of foam. The only thing I did notice was that the knob for removing the wire from the Proxon from the base uh, gets in the way of this a little bit at extreme angles, but there's a rumor that Gerard is possibly working on a fix to that. 
So keep an eye out for that potentially here in the future. But regardless, this is a tool that I'm so happy that I have and I can see myself getting an absolute ton of use out of it in the future. So that's what our foundation looks like. You're gonna notice that it's an inch thick foam. I did that on purpose because I'm gonna about to place some pink XPS in here. I'm going to glue it in place with some tacky glue. And why I did that at one inch thick is because I'm gonna pretend that that's my first one inch grid around the border of the foundation so that you're never gonna notice that I'm sliding this pink floor right into place. So once we have that done, we clean up our mess. Uh, didn't see that coming, I should have. And I'm gonna do a few XPS supports underneath the corners just to um, you know, add a little bit more structure to this. Now, as you can see, I'm gonna draw my grid work into both of these. Once it's Mod Podged and painted, you're never gonna know the difference. All right, so this is just a simple little pillar with a couple of magnets put right into the top of the stairs. And you can see how this is removable and again how we can use this on, in many other builds and applications. So on to the chimney. This was really fun to make this. I did it again out of the foam that Gerard had sent me. Using the plans, I'm just using that to mark out the locations where the smokestacks are going to stick out from. I added some texture with some aluminum foil, and then I used the brick roller for this section. Back to the proxon, just to cut these pieces out. We're essentially making like a little bit of a, a table here. That's the look that we're going for, so you can see the smokestacks underneath this. Now this is a very important piece. This is a ledge, we'll call it a ledge for the, the purpose of the video. And we're gonna use this to hide all the different breakpoints in the chimney and the vines that we're gonna add later on in the build. We're gonna to wanna to have a section right here, as you can see, we're gonna to have to cut that little tiny piece of the chimney out to get our ledge to fit into place. And you'll see just here in a minute how important these ledges are. All right, I took a, a pen, a little hacksaw, and uh, just put a few smokestacks into place and just pause the video and build your smokestack or your chimney to look just like this. Now all the subsequent sections are all gonna be obviously smaller and um, we're gonna glue those in separately. Now very important, do not glue the bottom of this piece. Again, this is gonna be removable from the layer below. So as you can see, all the subsequent sections are gonna be glued in separately. We've got three total sections, one, two, and three. And you can see how nice that stone or uh, brick look looks in this uh, foam. Okay, so now we're gonna work on a few bump outs for the windows. We're gonna hop back to the angle cutter. This is so awesome to use this again. Check this out right here. It's gonna make it look absolutely identical on both sides. It's a whole stack of stained glass windows that Gerard had sent me to choose from. I felt this color kind of fit in best with the haunted house. I'll put a link up above to my window video to show you just how I make all these windows. And this one right here, I just added a little stained glass. Now I painted all of these separately and got them all prepped ahead of time. You'll see why here in just a minute. I grabbed a yellowish kind of rag, a stained rag, and I thought this looked really nice for some old tattered uh, drapes that are gonna be in the Haunted Mansion. Ripped them up. This is really fun because you can get really creative and do any shape you want, right? Because they're all gonna be torn and tattered. Here, obviously, I just broke the window, put a little blood on the inside, and went from there. This is a time to really have some fun with the build. And all we do is just add a little bit of hot glue. Painted the background black, obviously, because we don't want the pink foam to show through. You could make a little shadow box or something that you could add some tea lights into to have them flicker on the inside as well. All right, a very simple window frame. And I made it very simple for a reason. And that is because we have a ton of windows to make. 
There's a whole bunch in this build, so we're trying to make it as easy as possible. And I used some Agrax Earthshade to dirty up a few of these blinds, but I found that using some pigment, like burnt umber or a dark brown pigment, worked even better and looked better, so I did that on the remaining of these. Once the windows are done, place them right into place with some hot glue. All right, now I want to thank again, Noble Knight Games for helping to support the channel and providing these miniatures for the video. These all came in handy. The only ones I didn't use are those bats. I was gonna place them on top of the build, but I ended up putting a hatch there instead. So now we're gonna grab this zombie, paint him up, and we're gonna get ready to place him into the build for some more details. This is a pair of wire cutters that I'm using just to cut him off at the knees because we don't need the whole miniature and in a very well ventilated area with a mask on because uh, you don't want to breathe any vapors in from you know burning this stuff. We're going to poke a little hole through that, hot glue him into place, and then we're going to add a LED behind him for a really cool lighting effect. I'll put a link up above. Uh, to my torch video, which will show you a little bit more in depth as to how I do this and how I make torches as well. Okay, so like I said, there's a ton of windows in this build. Now we're going to work on some dormer style windows that are going to go on the angled section of the roof. Pause the video here for the angle that you need and the shape. And I'm using a bunch of scrap just to cut out as many of these as I can. This is a funky little window frame here. You'll see this little arch to the back. The reason we have that is that this little window is going to go on the dome section tower on the left side of the building. This was a really fun window. All I did was take a larger window frame from Shifting Lands, press them into the foam to get my shape that I had to cut out. And then with a very sharp X-Acto knife, I like to use a new one here, we're gonna just cut around the section that's indented into the foam and they'll fit in very nice. This window, I couldn't wait to get my hands on. Uh, when I saw it on Gerard's website, I knew I had to have it and incorporate it into the build. It's his Rosetta window. This is gonna look really awesome right in the center of the building. And I knew I wanted to have stained glass and light behind it but I didn't want to see the tea light. So how do we solve that problem? Very simple. Scratch up a little bit of plastic from an old toy box or container. Then we place that right behind the stained glass. You can hold that in place with a little bit of super glue. Now we got the perfect diffuse light for the building. And that's where the Rosetta window is going to go. So as you can see, tons and tons of windows. We got these all prepped. This was a couple of days uh, worth of work just doing the windows. Now we can finally move on to the siding. This is some really thin XPS foam that I'm cutting some old chips of the wood out. I'm gonna use a wire brush to texture them. And I'm gonna use hot glue to glue these in place. And you wanna make a whole bunch of these. You don't wanna make one or two strips and have to stop. You wanna make like, 50 of them and then sit down and just go to town and the way we install these or, or put them on place your first section on and then just overlap it by maybe an eighth of an inch to cover up where they meet we'll put a couple straight strips a couple j channels around the window and a couple angle pieces like this to cover the corners now like i said you know it's going to take a while you could put all of these on first and then cut the windows in the problem with that is if you screw up, then there's really no way to fix it. This is a longer method of putting the siding on, but it's a little bit more accurate and a safer way of doing it. Now, I love this miniature. I actually already have it, but I didn't want to use it in this build because I wouldn't be able to use it again. So I just paint this one up similar to the way I have my other one painted. And we're gonna use her in the very front of the build and we're going to put a flickering LED behind it. It's going to look really awesome. And I'm sure if you get creative, you could probably find a way to access this through the back. That way you can take the miniature in and out and reuse it if you want to go that route. 
And the cool thing about using these LEDs is you can do any color you like at any time. All right, now I am so pumped to show you guys this. This is really awesome. The shingles by Shifting Lands saved me so much time on this build. I called Gerard up and just talked to him briefly about these shingles. He said, you wanna make full strips on a flat surface on some parchment paper and use a little bit of wood glue and then you can just cut the pieces out to whatever angle you need with some scissors like this. And it was an absolute joy to use these. Um, the wood glue cured in maybe a minute. So they were pretty much solid and, and locked right into place. You can cut them how you want. I stuck them onto the build with some hot glue and I was able to fly right through the shingle section. Now I made stencils for a lot of the angled section of the roof. You're definitely gonna wanna do that if you're not buying the plans because you don't wanna put these together and screw it up. Um, you're gonna waste a lot of shingles that way. And for this window, I had to put this picture in the background. It's an ode to one of my favorite all time uh, horror movies. If you know what it is, put a uh, comment down below and let everybody know what it is. It's such a good movie, you gotta check it out. Again, here's a tricky cut. Make sure you make a stencil before you put these scissors to the, uh, to the shingles. All right, super simple. All you gotta do is put a little break in each piece of the shingle right there and they wrap perfectly around a cone section. Super easy to work with and the smaller shingles look perfect over the dormers. Now that we have all of that done, we're gonna work around the perimeter of the roof. Gerard supplied some really, really nice like fence railing posts or some fence that we're gonna put around the top of this. You'd see it very typical in a Victorian style house. I used a wire brush to add some wood texture to this. And this is also gonna to help to cover up the very top shingle around the roof. Now you see a little black spot there at the bottom. How, notice how I didn't put any hot glue on that. That's because we're gonna cut a very thin section of foam, use it to cover up the corner of all these shingles, and then we're gonna cut it where that black spot was. And the reason we're doing that is we wanna be able to remove the whole top of this piece right here so that this section can be playable. Now that we got the whole piece and section put together, we're going to slap a little black paint and Mod Podge together to get this thing ready for painting. So now that we're ready to paint, I used a little black paint to go over this whole section again, a little pewter gray on the shingles, and then I used a little folk art warm white for a highlight. Don't be afraid if you get any of this paint on the already painted border around these windows, just use a Q-tip to kind of smudge it in place. It blends in real nice. All right, we got all our wood painted brown. We're gonna use a little linen to do a dry brush. And the cool thing about this linen color, I used it to dry brush everything once I was done washing the whole model. Now a little ivory white is used to highlight the very top of the building where the most light would be hitting it. So for the chimney, I wanted this to be, you know, really interesting. If you take a look online at some old chimneys, they got a really, like a lot of character to them. So I'm gonna use these two colors right here to mix up a sort of maroon color for the brick. And I painted some gray down there first to make it look like some grout lines were still visible. And then we're just gonna lightly dry brush some of that maroon over it. Then taking some dark gray or black, whatever you have laying around, lightly dry brush some areas. Do a little research online, you'll see what I'm talking about, how old brick patterns have this type of look to them. And they also have what looks like a little white mildewy or powdery substance over them. So that's what I'm trying to replicate here. Once we add a wash to it, we're gonna re-hit it with more of that highlight. Now I had originally planned on leaving the floor here black with a gray dry brush and then a brown wash over it. It did not look good. So I went back and I followed my 
uh, fence tutorial video. I'll put a link up above to that, which is how I painted all the floor here. And it really came out awesome once it was washed and dry brushed again. It really looked like an aged wood floor. So once all that's done, all our base painting is done, we're gonna now wash. This is a black wash that I made. I also made a brown wash. And I made a brand new batch because old batches, as you know, if you've got some of these laying around, can get some chunky stuff built up in them over time. I didn't wanna mess with that. Once that's been washed, we're gonna make sort of a little, I guess wash here, but this is my patina recipe. I painted that section in the back uh, a copper color. And all we're gonna do is smudge on a little of this uh, patina paint. I'm gonna dry brush it onto the, a few of the top shingles as well. Okay, if you work with pigments at all, you must own some pigment fixer. Um, very important to have this. You could also use you know, some spray alcohol um, to actually activate and hold the pigment in place. I find that the pigment fixer works obviously the best. So I'm painting kind of a few pigments on um, by putting them on after the fixer. Now for this section, I'm going to put the pigment first and then kind of like by capillary action, just dab some fixer on there to get a look resembling this right here. All right, time for some more details. So we're gonna make a little jack-o'-lantern that's gonna go on the side steps of this building. It's a flickering LED with some green stuff pushed onto it in a ball. I just shaped it up to look like a pumpkin cut the eyes, nose, and mouth out with the X-Acto and put a stick in it from my yard. Then we're gonna paint up a bunch of these miniatures and get them ready for some more embellishments here on the building in just a minute. On the stairs, the back side, we got that coin slot LED thing going on again to light up that pumpkin. So these are the railing posts that I was talking about from Shifting Lands. These things are beautiful. Gerard has actually, since making this video, has been working on a bunch of different designs to choose from um, that are even a lot more elaborate than this. So uh, check those out. You know, you could use toothpicks or little cocktail arrows like you see here, but I think for the main section around this roof, going with those uh, fence railing posts is key. I'll put a link up above to how I painted these arrows in this rusty effect. Uh, that'll be to my cemetery fence video. And all I'm doing is poking a hole in here, adding some tacky glue to install these. And don't worry if you get tacky glue excess around the perimeter of these uh, arrows. It's gonna dry clear. Just use a wet Q-tip to get up as much as you can and just leave the rest right in place. All right, this is for Gerard, these vines. He said, somewhere in this build, you gotta have some vines growing up somewhere. And I figured what better place to break up this long maroon chimney than with a bunch of vines. You can see how I cut the vines underneath those ledges so that you can't even tell that they're separate. And in this corner, we have a little zombie busting out of this glass. Pretty cool effect. So back to our little hacksaw, the front of this building, the front doors and the side door needed something and it hit me right away, it needed a lantern. So that's what we're gonna make here. We're gonna use some flickering yellow LEDs and just follow what you see here. I put a link earlier to my torch video. So just follow that to get an idea of how the shrink tubing goes on. And I'm just using a little bit of super glue and that's a little dab of accelerant on, right on the cardstock and that's going to cure that super glue right into place. We'll dab the other end into some super glue and be careful because this is gonna to wanna to adhere and cure almost instantly into the cardboard. Then a little bit of green stuff for some decoration to make the lantern look a little bit more believable. And I painted it the same way as I did in the cemetery fence video. And as you can see right here, how easy it is to just slide the lantern in, stick a battery in the back of that on the inside of the building, and you've got a really awesome looking effect. All right, so that about wraps up the epic build number four, the haunted house here on Tabletop Witchcraft. And I'd like to welcome a couple of special guests today. 
We got Gerard Boom of ShiftingLands.com and Scott Ismail of Paladin Woodworking. How you guys doing? Great. Good to be here, John. Good to see you. Great. Thank you. Uh, good to be here, uh, which is in my kitchen, by the way. <laughs> Now we're going to be looking at you, Gerard, at the viewfinder on the camera because okay. the settings are all messed up here, but we can see you, so we'll just roll with that. That's great. No problem. So I want to give everybody a quick uh, heads up as to uh, you know how we got together, how this whole thing transpired. And I think it was close to maybe two months ago now where I had the idea of doing a haunted house. And I reached out to you because I wanted to trim down some of the time it was going to take on the build and I've used your windows in the past and you had a lot of great windows you have a lot of great windows so I gave you a ring I had a couple other things I wanted to pick up as well and we started chatting about the haunted house and as soon as I said that you mentioned to me well wait a minute I kind of want to do the same thing yes yeah yeah absolutely um, and well maybe not a haunted house but I was thinking about this um, how do you call it Victorian uh, old land house it, not sure if that's the right word but um yeah so i thought hey that's cool i'm wor i'm working on a similar project um and one thing led to another and i heard myself saying well can we join forces why not do something together uh although it's a bit strange me here in the netherlands you out there in the us uh, but the first, the first thing I thought, well, you want to make a haunted house, uh, a Victorian-shaped building. Yeah. Um, first of all, uh, what do you need? Let me support you in your build because uh, I like what you're doing. Uh, I supported you before, and I thought, well, if I can help out in that way, yeah, why not? So uh, that's what I did. Um, and well, I can tell the whole story if you like. <laughs> 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 well, um, yeah. you showed me your 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 uh, first drawings. Uh, I, I added s some options. Uh, some you liked, some you may not like that much. But um, I think the the build, uh, well, it's it's epic and uh, it's 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 really cool. And um, uh, it, it was very fun to support you. Um, and just. Maybe I'm going too quickly now, but um, we have to do this again. Absolutely. And yeah, I prefer to do this in person, by the way. So <laughs> definitely, if yeah. all this yeah. Corona uh, bleep is over, um, I really hope uh, meeting you both guys, because we have a lot to discuss and we have a lot of hobby to do. All right. Yeah, no, it was a pleasure working with you and, and running the ideas back and forth you know, trying to modify certain parts of the build, certain things to add and how to how to change certain things around to make it flow better uh, was was a lot of fun. So uh, that was one thing. The other thing you mentioned about working on something together in person would be absolutely awesome. I would love to do that. Uh, you're more than welcome here. Obviously, you know that anytime. Um, Great. Which I think is kind of a good segue into, you know, why Scott's here. <laughs> Uh, and why I wanted to... Yeah, why are you here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to figure that out. Um, so yeah, I don't know if you guys want to uh, discuss, you know, um, some big news, some epic news. Uh, first time heard anywhere in the world, <laughs> right here in Tabletop Witchcraft. Uh, I put uh, <laughs> Scott and Gerard together and I guess I'll let you guys take it away. So yeah, John, you put uh, me in touch with Gerard a few months ago, which I was pretty excited about. I didn't know Gerard, but I knew his work. And of course, I've known Shifting Lands for a long time, being in the crafting community. This, his tools are kind of uh, a must-have for anyone with a Proxon hot wire cutter. So Gerard has been obviously selling tools for years from, uh, from Europe. And it's always been a little bit of a challenge for us in North America because obviously... Shipping is kind of expensive, can be expensive, and also with COVID, there's also more delays than usual uh, for getting uh, stuff over here from Europe. So he's been looking for someone locally to be able to manufacture and sell his products, actual Shifting Lands products. And obviously I spent a lot of time in the wood shop, so I appreciate that connection. And Gerard, we're pretty excited to announce that uh, Shifting Lands USA is gonna be opening up soon. And uh, you'll be able to order uh, genuine Shifting Lands tools right from the state of Maine in the United States. Exciting, really uh, exciting. And uh, 
we, we've uh, been working uh, very um, intense <laughs> uh, uh, over the couple uh, last uh, month. Um, and um, uh, I think it's good to know that uh, when we start, we start off with uh, approximately 10 or 12 um, mainly tools. Uh, but actually, uh, uh, yesterday I shipped um, a big package of uh, um, two millimeter MDF sheets mm -hmm. to, uh, to Scott. Um, so he can also start producing, for instance, window frames. Awesome. And uh, yeah. well, um, uh, we have, I think, um, if everything goes well, uh, and we, we can, um, I think within a year, we will be at a point where everything in my shop will be available, uh, still in my shop, but also in uh, the USA uh, shop. So basically, I am a very lazy person. Uh, I really <laughs> like to, to build. I like to build quick. Yeah. Um, but being so lazy means that I uh, invent or develop all kinds of tools, accessories uh, to speed up my builds. And the fun thing is, um, do you really need all that stuff? No, you don't. If, if, you, if you like to, if you have enough hours and you are creative enough yourself, forget about shifting lands. But if you like, um, making a whole table and you need to speed up things uh well maybe then some of my stuff uh, comes in handy so and this is very important all what i all the stuff i develop and design uh i design them because i use them yeah. uh sometimes people say hey you could also design this or that or and i say well um yeah i could but uh, it's not functional and I don't want to sell anything that isn't functional or uh, will add actually something to 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 your bill or to the hobby. Well, I can tell you right now, if I didn't have your tools and I didn't have the shingles, which were amazing and the time saver, and there's a ton of different shapes and stuff too that you have, mm -hmm. but without those things, um, this haunted house right here would still be pink. <laughs> you know, it wouldn't look uh, anything like it right now. So. Um, um, thinking back on the amount of shingles I sent you, uh, I absolutely believe you, yes. <laughs> yeah. I literally, I had two shingles left when I was done, two strips out of all those. Okay. I used them all. Wow. You, <laughs> you measured it all very well then, that's yeah. good. Yeah, my job number one came in handy for that, so. And, and oh, I, great, great, I, great. I, I think you're a little too humble sometimes, Gerard, too, because I know that these products speed up the process a lot, but yeah. having you know, some experience myself working with the Proxon and with foam, speed is wonderful, but the precision, I don't know how else you do it without some of these tools, you know, um, and I see some of the builds long before we met, I would Google you and your workshops that you were doing over in Europe to see what the guys were building, and particularly the Lord of the Rings pieces I loved. And I was like, how, how the heck did they do some of this stuff? Yeah. And then when you see how the tools work, you know, hand in hand with the, with the cutter, um, you're like, wow, that, that, I could actually do that if I had all the tools. So, Well, well uh, Scott, thank you for all the, the compliments. But, um, but while you were saying, or while you were speaking, I, I thought about, okay, well, I think, um, John, um, that would be, that must be our project. Um, after COVID, please get rid of it very quickly. <laughs> I come visit you yeah. and let's do a build. And let's make a lot of the rings something and let's make it a, a speed project like we build it in uh, only a few hours all right yeah I, um, I i build it we both texture it uh you paint it i go drink a coffee and we're done. <laughs> all right yeah sounds like a deal sounds good okay awesome that's good my area where i give the workshops goes from denmark in north europe to Switzerland, more or less, the middle of Europe. And so in that area, I do my workshops. Um, hello, US, when can I come over and do workshops in the US? <laughs> yeah. Well, you have to do one of your first ones right here in Maine. That'd be awesome. Yeah. I think, I think if, uh, I, because we, uh, I have to visit you both, and if I could stay there for a week, 
Why not do a one or two day build and people can join uh, on location? Why not? Yeah. Bring your great. product. That would be cool. Yeah, maybe we'll line that yeah. up. We'll have to talk about it. I got a couple of locations in mind where we could do something like that. So that'd be great. If, yeah. we, if we could pull that off, that would be awesome. And uh, may, if I may say so, uh, if not, then just cut it out. But we've al already discussed this, uh, John, how awesome, and Scott as well, how awesome it would be for us to join, visit a large convention, mm. uh, have our own shifting land booth, and uh, have a two, three, four day hell of a time uh, at, at this convention. That'd be a, that would be a blast. That, that is, that is yeah. very high on my list to do. Got to make that happen, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Mine as well. So, uh, yeah. Maybe we tie no, it all well, together. Uh, we'll see. Depends on how many trips yeah. you want to take over to the U.S. <laughs> and hey, Sorry, if, Hellman? if we have to go to Europe for a convention, I, you know, I'm okay with that too. So, yeah. you know, we'll owe you one. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I, I have a spare bedroom, so that's not a problem. So, <laughs> I'll sleep on the couch. Yeah, John and I are gonna need a probably different setup, but yeah. no problem. No problem. <laughs> All right, so I want to thank you for tuning in and watching this video. I want to thank Scott and Gerard. Thank you both for being here. I really appreciate it. Sure. Again, Gerard, thanks for um, really for all your support. I uh, hope everybody's excited for Shifting Lands USA. And uh, if you want, head on over to Patreon. Take a look at the tiers that I have over there. I've got a lot of cool tiers. The Coven tier has a new addition to it where we're going to start doing craft-offs where the winner is going to get a special gift from me. Uh, you can also check out in the description below the new Tabletop Witchcraft merchandise. And uh, yeah, until next time, I'll see you around. John. Yeah? Sorry. You forgot. You forget. No worries. Let me fix this. Roll the montage. <laughs>